everyone, my name's Catherine. I'm the Access Officer for the Department of Physics at Oxford University. And today we're going to be going through some solutions to PAT problems. From the 2012 paper, we're going to be having a look at questions 8 and 9. Uh, as ever, there is no one single solution to these. Uh, these are just going to be a couple of different ways you might approach these problems. And if you've got a different solution that still gives you the right answer, that's great. So let's see what we've got. Question eight says, consider two dice. One contains the numbers one to six. The other contains only one, two, three, each shown twice, i.e. one, two, three, one, two, three. What is the probability that when we roll the two dice, we will obtain a score of seven? Okay, so we add up one number of our normal dice, one to six, and one number of our special dice, one, two, three, and how often do we get a seven? One of the simplest ways to do this is to set out what's called a sample space diagram, uh, which sounds a lot more complicated than it is. All it really is, is writing down all of our possible options. So if we write down the possibilities from uh, the first dice across the top, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then our other dice, we can put our possibilities down the side. So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three. And then what we can do is we can set out all our possible uh, answers. One, two, three, one, two, three. Um, we're going to add them together because that's what it uh, tells us to do. So for example, one plus one is two. One plus two is three. You can see where this is going. Four, five, six, seven. One plus two is three. Uh, one plus three is four. But then we have one plus one, which is two. One plus two, which is three. And one plus three, which is four. And then as we run across here, we're going to get higher and higher numbers each time. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I imagine you can see all the patterns by now and have probably already found the answer, but I'm going to fill it all in anyway. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And finally, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So what we're looking for is all the different ways to score a seven. So we've got one here, we've got one here, we've got one here, and then we've got the same again. One here, one here, one here. Now, assuming our dice are fair, all of these options come out with equal probabilities. So uh, we've got 36 different options. So the odds of any given one is one in 36. Uh, so the uh, probability of any answer is uh, one in 36. Uh, so that's the probability, yeah, of anything. Uh, but the probability of rolling a seven, we've got six ways of doing it out of the 36. So the probability of a score of seven is going to be six times one over 36, i.e. six over 36, or one in six. Now on to question nine. Question nine says, solve cos squared theta plus sine theta equals zero for theta. Leave your answers in terms of sine theta. Okay, so uh, our equation is, and I'm gonna label this as equation one, cos squared theta plus sine theta equals zero. Now immediately one thing that should spring to mind if you're seeing uh, cos squared or sine squared and some uh, some sum of them is uh, the formula cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. Uh, that should be something that you know. Um, let's call that equation two. Uh, if we rearrange two, 
if we rearrange for cos squared theta, we can probably substitute into our original equation. So we have cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. Uh, for consistency, I'm going to call that 3. And then we're going to substitute 3 into equation 1, uh, which is going to give us 1 minus sine squared theta plus sine theta equals 0. So now we can see what we've got is a quadratic in sine theta. To make it all a little bit neater and a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on, let's uh, rearrange this. Uh, let's multiply through by minus 1. Um, and set it out in the sort of normal order of quadratic terms. So we will have sine squared theta minus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Now I sometimes find um, things like quadratic equations in trigonometric functions, just they just look a little bit complicated to me. So one thing I sometimes like to do is to... Um, change my variables, essentially to rewrite this equation, but in uh, a slightly different way. So we can say something like let x equal sine theta. And then we can rewrite our equation in terms of x. So this becomes x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Now we mustn't forget that x equals sine squared. Uh, sorry, x equals sine theta, but we can use it in this form for now to make it just nice and clear so that we don't slip up and make any mistakes anywhere. So we've got a quadratic where we need, if we wanted to factorise this, we'd be looking for two things that multiply to minus one and add to minus one. That doesn't seem, I can't think of a way to do that off the top of my head. So let's go down a different route and use the quadratic formula in which case we have that a equals 1, b equals minus 1, and c equals minus 1. That's assuming the standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And our quadratic formula tells us that x equals uh, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2 a, then we can just substitute in. So minus b is going to give us 1, plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared is 1. Uh, minus 4 times 1 times minus 1 is just going to be plus 4. Uh, and then all divided by 2. So that is 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. So that's our answer for what x could be. And remember, we've got two answers here. We've got the uh, solution where we use the plus and the solution where we use the minus. But let's not forget that x equals sine theta. And we know something about sine theta. We know that sine theta has got to be between minus 1 and 1. And we need to check that these solutions work, that these solutions sit within that. And uh, we can see that they don't because uh, root 5, I don't know the value off the top of my head, but I know that it's going to be bigger than 2 because uh, root 4 is 2. So if we've got 1 plus something bigger than 2 divided by 2, that's something along the lines of uh, something bigger than 3 over 2. It's definitely bigger than 1. So the only solution can be the one that uses uh, the subtraction. So 1 minus root 5 over 2. So uh, sine theta has got to be between minus 1 and 1. So x equals 1 plus root 5 all over 2 cannot be a solution. So sine theta equals uh, 1 minus square root of 5 divided by 2, which you could also write, if you prefer, as a half minus root 5 over 2. And there we go. As it has asked us to, we've left our answer in terms of sine theta. 
but maybe that middle step of writing it out in terms of x might make it just that little bit easier to see what's going on. All right, those are the two solutions for our problems this week. Uh, so that was questions eight and nine. Very appropriately, Helena will be going through question 10 next week. So I hope we uh, see you again there. Thanks, everyone.